Welcome back again to another episode of Big Red's Isopods. And this week we're going to be separating out some color morphs that uh, are unique and you guys have noticed in the other videos. So before further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, so we already got our container set up here, just like I've shown you in other videos. Already got the soil all mixed up and the holes drilled in it. So all we have to do is get ourselves some ice pods and we'll be good to go. All right, so the culture I wanna start out with and I uh, wanna look through first is my culture of Armadillidium paraquet. Uh, the one that we noticed that uh, there was some white morphs going on in it, uh, where they were coming out with a really white color. So there is a lot of, well, see, there's a perfect example right there. That's what we're gonna be looking for today. Is ones that look exactly like this guy here with the white color morph. Uh, it's really neat to see, as you can see, there's another one over here. I'll quickly grab him before he screws off. Okay, let's just, these, these guys are quick. So as you can see here, we have the one that's pure white and then this one over on my hand that's kind of got a white stripe. Now I'm gonna put these guys in the new container as well with some other ones. I'm gonna to try to get as many that look the same as that as possible or have different morphs that are similar like this one here who's got the white tail. And then that way they'll be able to breed together and will be more likely to carry on that gene. Even if I got some that are gonna be more of a regular coloration, it should be fine due to the fact that the genes should pass on and become a more dominant trait. Now I am gonna to continue to look in here to see if I see any more that have any sort of white morphs going on or white colorations going on or a lighter color. There's one there that's kind of a lighter color, but I think that's just because he recently molted. I really wanna look for anything that's got a really white coloration to it. That way it continues to carry on the trait. I will just start grabbing uh, different isopods that just happen to uh, be an age where they can reproduce. That way that the trait will just naturally carry on and then I'll have to separate them out again. But it's better than doing nothing. If I just left them in here, the trait might just disappear on its own or it just might become a recessive gene instead of becoming a more dominant gene. Yeah, I don't see... Uh too many other ones with any sort of white coloration in here so it's a possibility that they just haven't had enough time to breed or just hasn't morphed out that much so i'm probably just going to grab a couple regular types toss them in there and hopefully they carry on those genes so there we go we're going to be leaving these uh white morph guys here as well as some other normal type colored uh, isopods in the same container and hopefully that the genes will continue to spread and we'll end up with a completely new color morph or a different color morph than I originally had. All right, so the next species and or morph we're taking a look at is we're gonna look at our uh, Kibaris marinas, the little sea isopods, where a lot of you guys have noticed a lighter coloration isopod in here, which I see already right here. Or they're almost a peach color, I do believe most of you guys have been calling them, which are really beautiful. Uh, they look quite different compared to the regular ones. So we're going to be taking them and putting them in the other culture. Just uh, for an example, I'll show you a regular type Cubaris Marina, where they have like a dark coloration on their, their back there. Uh, they all have these little orange dots on their bum here, if I can get my camera to focus here. You can kind of see it as he's running around there. There you go. You can kind of see the two orange dots on his on his backside there. Um, but yeah, that's what the wild type looks like. Or the, the normal type, I guess you'd say, which is probably comparable to a wild type. And we're just gonna be going through here and taking any of these uh, peach morphs out and placing them into the other container. There's a couple really good ones there. You can see they're really light color. Oh. Gotta be careful. They do run really quick and they're really small. I don't want to miss them. So there's a couple there. There's another one up over here I'd like to grab. Get that guy in there. 
Now this one, I shouldn't have to put any wild types in there because there should be enough of the peach coloration ones that I could put them all in here without uh, having to worry about having to fill it with any wild types. Now these guys do move fast. They're crawling all over my hands right now. But I'm gonna try my best to get as many as I can out of here. Oh, there's another one there. Chance for that guy over. There's a fairly large adult there. Chance for that one over. Yeah, they're getting all over my hands here, these little guys. Just like ants. It's all good though. They're not going too far up my arms. Oh, there's a couple more there. Transfer them over. I'm trying to be gentle here because they are relatively small and I don't want to hurt them. I do want to get them over into the other container. You can see it's a really, really beautiful color morph here. Yeah, these are, this is how um, different color morphs of isopods are done, right? You just, you happen to see a, some sort of morph in one of your cultures, you separate them out, and then it becomes a completely new um, morph in the hobby, gets more produced widely, and more people buy them. Oh, there's one right there, really nice colored one. As you can see here, a lot of them are hiding down in these cracks in here, and I'm unable to get them, but there should be plenty of me to separate out. And there you guys go there. There's my separated out uh, peach morph of the Cubaris Marina. Uh, I don't have too terribly many in here, but it's a very concentrated uh, culture of just the peach morphs, or ones close enough that I was gonna call them as a peach morph. There's some that are really light, like this young one over here. And then some of the adults that are more of a brown color like that one and this one down over here. But I think that's just gonna be the adult form of the peach morph. But either way, this culture should do good. And as a Cubaris Marina, um, kind of expert myself, not really, but uh, I have had them for a while. I know that they will breed super quick. So there would be lots of them in no time. So this last color morph I'm gonna be looking for is kind of a little bit more difficult to see. Uh, I've noticed it for a while now, and I haven't really done anything with it, but I've really wanted to. Um, I'm gonna kind of try to slow this guy down here. So these are my powder blues. Oh, there we go, I lost them. But um, I've been noticing some in here where they have almost an orangish red skirt, mostly on their tails or their, um, I can't remember what they're called, on the back side of them. They've been having more of a red morph or red skirt about them. Well, here's a really good example. I wish I could grab this guy. Just really quick, there we go. So here's a really great example here, if I can get them to slow down here for you, where they have like a really red back end there. Kind of see it there. And I kind of wanted to separate them and see if I could highlight that morph and see what would happen. Now, I haven't noticed this in all of my powder blues, but definitely two out of the four uh, cultures that I have definitely are showing um, definitely a pronunciation of this. Uh, I don't know if it's because they're half of the same culture. They were probably, because when I had just two cultures, they were probably part of the same culture. And now that I've separated them up into four, I now have two separate cultures that are expressing this more. So I'm just gonna go through here. This is gonna take me a long time just because of the fact that, uh, sorry here. This is gonna take me a really long time due to the fact that um, there's just a really fast isopod. Um, I'm gonna have to really go through here. Here, there's a good example there. I'm gonna kind of hold on to him so he can't run away, but you can kind of see they got almost like a red flare at the back there. And I kind of wanted to separate it out and see what would happen. So I'll show you um, a clip of them after I get them all separated out. Uh, sorry about my camera here, it's being all buggy. But uh, after I get them all separated out, I'll show you guys, but uh, it's gonna take me a while to go through this because they're just they're just so fast and there's so many of them. I kind of want to find the best ones for uh, for these morphs that I'm trying to, 
gonna try to figure out. Now that I have them kind of more grouped together, you can kind of see the, the expression that I'm kind of trying to talk to you about. It's really showing up on some of them more than other words. Um, the second container I went through uh, kind of had more of um, a morph that kind of looked like they were turning into powder oranges, like that really light one you see over there. So I did put one of them in there but I didn't want to put too many because I don't want I don't want these guys to turn into powder oranges, right? Because that's where powder oranges originally came from. I'm sure that fellow there would eventually down the line end up breeding into powder oranges. But what I'm looking for is kind of the red expression on the bum, which I think is gonna end up being a really cool more. So hopefully I get some out of this container and then uh, yeah, they keep on breeding that way. That would be great. Well, thanks everyone for uh, watching my video this week and uh, helping me go through my containers here to kind of see if we could get any sort of morphs. It's my first time ever trying to create my own morphs uh, without buying any from um, different hobbyists or from different expos or stores. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it works out for the best. If it does, then obviously I'm going to continue to try to do this with some of my other species that kind of have shown some sort of difference between the natural type and some sort of morphological uh, differences. Like I've noticed some of my dairy cows kind of have more of a red color to them, which I think might be cool. But then at the same time, I'm not too sure if that's just an adult male because it mostly seems to show up on adult males. So I don't know. Uh, we'll <laughs> I'll keep you guys updated on this and then uh, we'll see in the future. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys again next week. All right, bye.